Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call Halal, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hope for the elect, the Akim who's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere uh, sisters, the Akwat who uh, listen and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all the new truth, the new viewership coming into this faith. Uh, just back with another lesson, and uh, here we are on the hills of another pass over here in so-called 2024. And, you know, brothers, we all try to come into Passover, you know, uh, with the right mindsets, basically reflecting on the things that we can improve on. Because the scripture says in Second Corinthians, the 13th chapter, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. I'm loosely paraphrasing. So we always need to take time to just examine and just um, focus on we can find uh, better ways to strengthen our weaknesses and, and find ways to, to better serve the Lord, understanding that we're going to require a great deal of, of mercy to make it out of this destruction that's uh, prepared through biblical prophecy for Babylon the Great, which we know as America, okay? So you got a lot of these Israelite groups. They try to diminish Yahweh Shah's role, his authority, his rank, you know, and just say that, well, hey, we only uh, worship the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, and they always try to diminish and try to marginalize Yahweh Shah's role, man. When the point I'm going into in this lesson is ultimately Yahweh Shah, he is our Passover, man, because he was the only man that came in the flesh and, and, and sin not, man. And that's why he was worthy to, to sit at the the, the, the the left hand, or not the left hand, Salakia. Salakia for that. He was worthy to sit at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You know, because he's the only one that came in the flesh when he came as Yahweh Shah, and he did not commit sin. Okay? And we know that the, the biblical definition of sin is transgression of the law. So Yahweh Shah, you know, he kept the law perfectly. That's why he's known as the sacrificial lamb. Through his blood, we have access, we have adoption back to the Heavenly Father, man. You know? So that's why we uh, reverence and we give honor and praise and glory to Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. That's the Heavenly Father in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah. Okay? So. Here it is, you know, we got the Passover coming up in a couple of days. And this just gives us an opportunity to basically clean up some things that may be hindering our walk in the faith, that may be hindering us going uh, to another glory in this faith, whatever the case may be. That's why I, I quoted that scripture, Second Corinthians 13, examine yourselves, because we all have certain things that we may need to examine that we can sharpen up on, man, because... Unlike Yahweh Shah, none of us brothers, you know, within the body, you know, are perfect as, as far as keeping the law, which we understand that the law is not going to justify us anyway. We're justified uh, by faith uh, through grace or through grace by faith in Yahweh Shah. Okay. But before I just, you know, ramble on too much, I'll, I'll hit some scriptures, Lord willing, this to edify and just exhort the body. Now, I'm going to start off here in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. It says, purge out there for the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. So, and, and it, we actually have a, a custom, you know, during the, the, the week, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where you have to remove all leaven out of your household, man. Okay? But right here, it's talking about spiritually, man. You know? And I know when Yahweh Shai himself uh, talked about the leaven of the Pharisees, for example. He was talking about those false doctrines, okay? Because you got a lot of Israelites out there that's uh, teaching our people that they're Israelites. They may teach some of the laws or whatever the case may be, but they're going off according to the fullness of the doctrine, especially as it concerns Yahweh Shah and in the volume of the book that is concerning Yahweh Shah. But I'll read this again, 1 Corinthians 5. In seven, it says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, 
as ye are unleavened. So we got to purge out the old leaven. For brothers that's holding on to old grudges, you know, just old bitterness, you got to let go of that shit, man. Because those old grudges, that old bitterness, it can hinder you uh, being delivered ultimately, man. Because just like in ancient Egypt, you know, you have to have the blood on your doorpost to get passed over by that, that angel. Which if you could receive it through the spirit, that angel that was passing through Egypt was Yahweh Shah. But we're trying to be passed over, man, from judgment. We're trying to uh, have an exemption from judgment. You know, because right now we're in a major time of judgment. So we got to purge out the old leaven, man. Old bitterness. Old grudges, just old things within the walk of faith that you haven't purged out, man. And that could that could be different from 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 uh, person to person, you know. That's why it's important that you uh, be critically honest with your your own self and examine your own self, man. It says, "Purge out there for the old leaven that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened." For even Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So I like how it's worded right here. It says, for even Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it says, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So when we, uh, you know, eat the, the bitter herbs, when we eat the, the unleavened bread, when we eat the lamb, especially when we eat the lamb, man, it's all representation of Yahweh Shah, man. We're taking the, the the part in the feast of him, man. That's why Yahweh Shah said, eat my body, drink of my blood. But he was basically really talking about the word, the true essence of the, the, the correct doctrine as it pertains to him. Okay? So we have to be a living manifestation of this word as he was to the best of our ability. And the beautiful thing is, we're not expected to do this thing perfectly, man. That's why it's so beautiful that the sacrifice that he made, it says, for even Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So he's already been sacrificed for us, man. That's why we're able to have access to mercy and redemption, not being able to keep the laws perfectly, because he already made that sacrifice for us, man. Verse 8. It says, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So that's clear to the cut right there. It says, therefore, let us not, Salakia, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. So not with all of these old things in your mind, these old uh ways and, and behaviors and patterns of thought we're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of Yahweh Shah man and that renewal process is going to continue until Yahweh Shah delivers his elect out of here man you know for me personally I'm, I'm appreciative because the, the Passover is just another opportunity to, 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 to basically uh, get some things right where I may have so-called fallen short or, or missed the mark on, man. Not saying that I'm going to do things perfectly going forward, but it's a chance to sharpen up, man, for all of us, man. But it says, I'll read uh, verse 8 again, 1 Corinthians 5 and 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So we want to make sure that we're taking of the Passover worthily, man. Not having a, a malicious spirit, not having an ulterior motive, man. With the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, man. Having a pure heart towards serving Yahweh Shah and, and keeping the Passover as a solemn assembly and, and wanting to get stronger in your faith in Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, I'll say that, okay? But the beauty in the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made, because like I said, like the scripture says, he is our Passover that was sacrificed for us, man. We don't have the burden of, of being 
subject to the penalty of the law if we break the laws, man. So that's why Yahweh Shai, he has to be honored, man. He has to be honored. But I'm going to read this right here. This is 1 John 2 and, and 1. It says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. So we always uh, basically exhort brothers not to sin, not to break the laws. The laws that you're able to keep, we keep to the best of our ability. Like, we always go into the dietary law. There's certain things that you can abstain from eating, uh, you know, like when it comes to uh, pork, you know, all different unclean fish, shellfish in the sort. You can abstain from those things, man. And you can abstain from uh, committing adultery, at least willingly, because in the, in the day and age we live in, in today, it's very rare that you'll find a, a woman or a wife that hasn't already uh, had sex with another man, okay? So t technically, under the law, we've all guilty of committing adultery at one point or another, but if you willingly sleep with a woman that you know already has a man, you're willingly uh, committing sin. And I'm just giving examples. So we don't never uh, push any brother to just willingly sin. We always tell brothers the laws that we keep, we keep to the best of our ability, man. But at the same time, we understand that the law does not justify us. Why? Because we can't keep it perfectly, man. That's why Yahweh Shah had to make the sacrifice he made in the first place. I don't know why that concept is so hard to grasp for a lot of you bugged out ass Israelites, man. But I'll continue on. It says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the righteous. So it says, if any man does sin, if any man breaks the law, we have an advocate or a mediator to the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh Shah. And it says, and he is the propitiation. And when you go into the word propitiation, it means atonement. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And that world is talking about the nation of Israel and chiefly the elect. Because we know that two-thirds, according to prophecy, they're going to have to receive their judgment on this side because they refuse to repent and follow the Lord. But with all being said, man, it's it's just a, a time to be very grateful in the spirit if you're still in this thing. Pray that the Lord strengthens your faith. Really try to come into the Passover with a, 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 a newness of mind, willing to serve the Lord. Better than you did the year before, man. Okay? Knowing that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that the wages of sin is death, man. And we don't want to come in with that old leaven, you know, that can hinder our walk and get us up out of there ultimately. So I just want to just speak on a few words because I was chopping it up with a brother earlier. And we was just talking about, you know, getting ready for the Passover service and all which even within the Passover service, we're not going to even keep the service perfectly, man. The scriptures in Judges 5 and 11, it says, we rehearse the righteous acts. So even within the uh, the conducting of the service, it's just a rehearsal, man. But at the end of the day, it's ultimately just a showing of our faith. So with all being, with all being said, hold fast to the faithful word to our big brother, Yahweh Shah comes to redeem us. So with all being said, I want to give all praises to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.